Can you say PlayStation Diorama? Can you say still works and plays games? Well, well, yes, you can. So here's the deal. I'm going to be taking this PlayStation, I'm going to be completely disassembling it and just tearing it apart and then I'm going to reassemble it in a way that it's going to be like a nice display with all of the pieces, the components, the different motherboards all separate from each other and it'll still be able to work. So it'll be a really cool display in a working PlayStation. So I think this is going to be pretty cool and it's going to stand out and I'm excited so let's get into it. The first order of business is just to take off a couple screws so we can actually get inside the PlayStation itself. Oh. This is such a clean PlayStation. Time to start taking out all the big components. This is the controller port. This is the part that's responsible for plugging in controllers and memory cards so you can access save files and such. Just gotta remove a few cables. This is the optical drive for the PlayStation 1 and it actually reads spinning discs with a laser and a motor and I think that's pretty cool. More and more screws to take out. Remove one more cable. This is the power supply board for the PlayStation. This is what turns the wall outlet 120 volt AC into usable DC for the PlayStation motherboard. Time to remove the metal shielding over the motherboard. Just a few more screws left. It's so clean, this motherboard. The last PlayStation I opened up had a rust. <laughs> this one is insanely clean. This is the PlayStation motherboard. A couple facts about it. It's got a 33.86 megahertz processor. It's got two megabytes of RAM and one megabyte of VRAM. And for comparison, a PS5 has 16 gigabytes of RAM. So just think about that. I don't even have to really clean this. This is perfect the way it is. And the last thing inside the PlayStation case is just a couple little metal stamp sheets that kind of hold some of the components in place. Looking clean. And obviously, the bottom of the PlayStation shell. Just nice, gray, clean plastic. Nice. One of the first problems we're going to face is with this disk drive right here. If you notice, the ribbon cable isn't very long. But I went ahead and I found a solution for that, and that is... They sell ribbon cable extenders for the PlayStation 1 optical drive, so I went ahead and I got myself three of them. So I'm going to chain them up and have a really big, like, daisy chain of uh, ribbon cables. You can see they just kind of clip together. For the controller ports, the ribbon cable that comes with it is actually pretty short, and I want a longer one so I can have it further away from the motherboard. So I went ahead and I found myself a longer ribbon cable. The next thing we're going to notice is the cable that goes from the power supply to the motherboard is pretty short and we're going to want this a lot longer. So I'm going to do the same thing that I'm going to do with the small optical laser cord or wire. I'm going to cut it in half and I'm going to add some wire in between it to make it a lot longer. So let's go ahead and start making some longer cables. We're going to go ahead and start with the power cable and no turning back now. Time for a soldering montage. I always like soldering things. I think it's a fun process and it always feels nice when you solder something like wires or any electronics and then at the end of it it works. It almost feels like magic or something. One down. I'm happy with my choice with the green wire. I think it looks really nice, almost like a watermelon. And I also love the heat shrink tubing. It makes any wire soldering job just look so much nicer and so much cleaner and safer to boot. Boom, we got the power cable extended. Now we gotta work on the small little optical drive cable. Cutting it, fluxing it, soldering it, and we're getting it. Fire hot. I always love the magic of video editing. It can take a process that takes about an hour and just condenses it down to just a couple seconds long. And that to me is pretty cool. 
Wires are all soldered up. Let's put a little tape on it to hold it together. It's just gonna make the cable management for these wires just a little bit nicer. Beautiful, if I say so myself. Now, let's start building how we're gonna hold this thing together. So I got myself a couple pieces of wood and I started drilling some holes in it. I did pre-mark all the holes that I was drilling just to make my life a little bit easier. Countersunk holes are just so satisfying. Time to start to put this thing together. Some huge deck screws and start screwing them in. Oh yeah, starting to look really nice. Sandpaper? Yes please. Gave the whole surface just a nice little quick sanding. Even removed some of the numbers on the wood. No Wi-Fi? Time to use the router. I went ahead and took the router around the whole edge of the project, giving it nice curved edges. Simple, easy, but I think it makes any project look so much nicer. Now it's time to trace out all the components and mark all the screw holes so I can figure out where they're all going to be placed. And for how I'm going to attach these to the wood, well, I got myself this little computer standoff kit. You've probably seen these for like desktop computers. I'm going to take three of these little brass standoffs, make them to a little tower, and then I'm going to use a screw and I'm going to screw them on through the holes on the circuit boards and give it nice little legs. And then I'll put on three more of them so it's like a little table and then that will be how they stand on the wood. So after marking all the position of all the pieces, I started to drill out a couple little divots. Time for a little test fit. And it fits like a glove. And now for how I'm going to get the monitor on there. I drilled a couple little holes that we're using bolts to hold it on with. And then I also had to drill some pretty large holes so all the wires could fit through it. And it was looking pretty clean. I also had to drill a couple more large holes throughout the rest of the board because there is a whole bunch of wires that I'm going to be winding through the back of it. So I just kind of punch them through. Now that the structure's all built, it's time to start making it look nice. And I got myself some pre-stain, some wood stain, and some satin clear coat. Time to start with the pre-stain. Just take a little towel and just really just rub the pre-stain all over. Can't forget the little monitor stand. I decided to even do the back of it. Even though you're not going to see it, it'll just make me feel better. A little bit later and it's time for the actual wood stain. Flip it over and I'm going to do the back of it first. Just take my towel and just start staining. I always love to use wood stain. It just makes anything look so much nicer. It's a fun process. I just wish that it took quicker to dry between each step. I ended up using a lighter wood stain just because I thought it would look nice with the PlayStation in front of it. And the next day, it's looking pretty nice. I go ahead and flip it over and I'm going to start clear coating the back of it. I dip my little foam brush in the clear coat and I just start clear coating the whole thing painting a nice thick coat on everything. I flip it over but keep it propped off off the ground and I just start putting a nice generous coat on the front of it. Look at that beautiful shot. And honestly I just think it's starting to look so much nicer even before it's dry. Very cool. And would you look at that? It's done. It's looking nice. It feels nice. I'm super happy with it. I went ahead and put some legs in the power supply board. I already had them on the motherboard and now it's time to put them on the optical drive. I stuck some of the standoffs in the little rubber holders and then the threading stuck through and I screwed on some legs that way and I thought it turned out pretty nice. Look at that. It's like a little table. I then go ahead and install some of the legs on the back shell of the PlayStation just through some of the screw holes. Very simple, very easy, just a screw and the legs and it works nice. And I go ahead and dry fit it and it fits like a glove. It's time to get serious. The first thing I'm going to install is one of these LED light pucks. I put a little 3M stick pad and bing bang boom, stick it into place. Time to bust out the hot glue gun. I'm going to use some high temperature wood glue sticks and I'm going to fill up all of the little holes and quickly before it dries I'm going to go ahead and shove in all of the components. Seems like a foolproof plan. Let's get it. For the top shell of the PlayStation, I went ahead and I just used some longer screws that I stuck in the original screw holes and then I glued those into place. The hot glue method is working like a charm. Next it's time to glue on the power supply board and boom boom boom, it's perfect. A little cleanup, and I love it. Now for the motherboard. I glue up the holes, I stick it in and it's a perfect little table of PlayStation 1 computing power. For the optical drive, I thought it would be a little bit easier if I pre-thread some of the cables through the holes. Then I glue up the three little holes and I stick in the legs. Probably the coolest optical drive I've seen. 
little bit of cleanup, and it's perfect. Time to install the controller ports. I thread the ribbon cable through the little hole I drilled, and for this I opted to use these little square 3M things as a ruler guide, and then I took the hot glue and I actually glued it on the circuit board, and really quickly I took it and I stuck it on the wood using the little 3M squares as a straight edge kind of ruler. <laughs> I think it turned out nice. Time to put the monitor on. I pick up the monitor mount, I thread in four little machine screws, I go ahead and grab the monitor, flip it over, and before I attach the little mounting board, I put in the two bolts that's going to attach it to the back plate, and then I go ahead and I screw on the four little machine screws to the back of the monitor, and I give it the old shake test, and I'm satisfied. For the RCA cable, I ended up getting a little splitter, so I can have it attached to the small monitor, but I can also easily attach it to another monitor without taking wires apart. Can you say more LED pucks? And I can say yes, two of them, as we stick them on the back of the small monitor. Should look pretty cool once at night. It's at this point where I start to realize how many wires I'm actually going to be dealing with out of the back of this whole thing. It's all about feeding all the wires to that small little 30 millimeter hole. So after a couple minutes of just constantly shoving them, I ended up getting the two bolts through the other side. I put on some washers and wing nuts and it was on there. Now, time for some more lights. I ended up taking off the back shell. You can see the little legs are still there. And I attached another little LED puck behind it because I think it'll look pretty cool, the light shining through the grills. Motherboard time. I ended up taking off the motherboard, revealing the hole, and I started feeding some light through. And the motherboard's pretty special, so I decided it was going to get two of the LED pucks. Now it's time to start feeding some wires through. This one's the power cable. This one is the controller ribbon cable. This one is the optical drive ribbon cable. And now the optical drive other little cable. And then last but not least, the biggest one, which I probably should have done first, the giant audio video cable, but I made it work. Time to screw the board down and I am super happy with the way it's looking. Let's put in the power cable. I take off the power supply board, I plug in the power cable, and then I go ahead and I screw it back into place. Time to start the wiring on the back side. I had to drill some pretty large holes through some of those big pieces of wood in the back so I could fit some of the ribbon cables through. I also got another small extension cable for the controller ports to make it a little bit longer. Time to plug in the RCA cables. Red, white, yellow. Now it's time to feed the power cable so it reaches the power board. And now for the reason why I have such big pieces of wood on the back of this, because I have to hide a power strip back here. <laughs> I ended up attaching it with some small little wood screws. Time for some cable management because it's about to get crazy. I start wrapping up the RCA cable and I put a little green velcro zip tie around it. Time to work on the light situation. I plug in all of the lights into the little adapter. Then I go ahead and take the giant squid of cables and wrap a little green zip tie around it. And then I take some little 3M pads on the junction box. And then I go ahead and take that and I stick it onto the side of the little wood panel. Can't forget to plug it in. Time for a little bit more cable management because there's about to be a giant squid's nest of wires back here. And pretty much at this point, I did what anyone would do in this situation. I took all of the wires and I turned them into a super cluster of wires and then just zip tied those all together and just pretended like it wasn't there. Time to feed the power cable through. I go ahead and plug in the power cable to the power board. And now for the power button. I ended up using an extension cord that's controlled by this small little button on the end of a wire. And I go ahead and 3M stick that down to the board. And this thing isn't going anywhere. It's going to be perfect. If you can see here, this is the little button that lets the PlayStation know if the lid is open. I'm going to have to go ahead and glue this down. <laughs> I used this glue with the little UV light for instant cure, and I glued the button down to make the PlayStation think the lid is closed. I take a little 3M square and I stick it on the back of the remote control for the LED lights, and then I go ahead and stick it on the back bottom right corner of the whole unit. Perfect. Time to label some stuff. Got the top shell, the bottom shell, the power supply board, the optical drive, the controller ports, the power slash reset button, and of course, the motherboard. Just got two more pieces to add to make this thing final touch. One of them is this controller holder right here and the other one is going to be on the other side and that's going to be 
the game holder. It's finally finished. The PlayStation diorama, playable, usable, exploded, dissected, on display, fun game console. Let's go. Go ahead and grab your favorite game. Definitely the coolest optical drive for the PlayStation I've seen. And I like the little game holder. Can't forget the memory card and controller. Plug them in the port. Ignition. It works. I am so happy it actually works. I gotta say, I'm super pleased with the LED lights and I love how you can control it with the controller. It looks so nice at night or in the dark and it just gives a nice immersive feel to whatever game you're playing and I just love it. And plus, you can party if you want to. I do like how the light shines through the bottom shell and I absolutely love how it shines through some of the circuitry on the motherboard. It's just so awesome. I did end up leaving all the buttons on the top shell in case you missed them and I didn't think about it but it's cool the light shines through when you open it. I just think it's so cool to see the optical drive function just like that. Almost looks like it's floating. Just don't look into the eye. The only thing left to do now is actually game on it. Boing, boing. All right, Frogger. Let's go. Oh yeah, the whole point is to rescue tiny colorful frogs. Oh, and I instantly jumped in the water. I like the burp when you eat something. It's great. Boom, ba -dum, ba -dum. We did the training. We only lost two lives. Probably not the best. There's just something about seeing the disc spinning and know that it's like reading the disc. It's cool. I think that's definitely my favorite part of this whole setup. Avoid the lawnmowers. I mean, that is like a frog's worst nightmare. Oh! <laughs> that was scary. Boom! There we go. Obviously, we're going to play some Resident Evil 3. Definitely my favorite PlayStation game. Let's uh, put on some blue. Resident Evil's probably red. Man, the light around the monitor and everything at night is gonna be amazing. And we're gonna be Carlos. I'm happy with the way the wires look on the front. On the back, they're a little jumbled, but it is what it is. All right, that's where we gotta go. Start in the subway. See ya. Can we run past them? Yup, beautiful. Run past the birds. Yes, we made it. Okay, good. Now, we wait. There it is, 84 seconds, that's amazing. We just got 45 seconds more than our starting time. That's like a main point in this whole level, the barrels. Okay, the dogs. Can we just run past them, is that a thing? I don't know. It looks actually pretty bad. Come on. Okay. We must see how injured I am. And I'm fine. Okay, and then uh, Nemesis of first sighting is here. We're gonna do quick right turns. And go. Go, 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 go. Don't let him touch me. He's always right there. Oh, these guys. I feel like they gotta... Uh-oh, this is bad. There's like a... Sp 
a move where they can literally chop your head off, and they did. They, they, they can one shot you. Ugh. Yes, today's not the day for Resident Evil. Overall, I'm super happy with the way this turned out. I think it's really cool. I like how the light shines through the motherboard. You can really see it. And I do like how the lights actually change colors as well. And you got all the components here. The power supply, the motherboard, the controller ports, the optical drive, both of the shells, and the nice little controller uh, holder and game holder, and then the nice little on-off button right here. Overall, super pleased with it. Looks really cool. I don't think there's anything else like this out there. I think it was just a really cool project to take on. I'm excited with the way it turned out. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. hope you learned something. hope you just enjoyed it in general. And I'll catch you on the next one.